If there's one thing we know how to do here in Appalachia, it's telling tales. And that's only natural, cause we got a lot of folklore all its own. Made up of monsters, ghosts, jack tales, and a whole lot more. Sit back and listen now as we tell you all the lore of these mountains. You're listening to Mountain Lore, Tales from Appalachia. What you doing, Gina? I'm thinking. Hmm. That's interesting. I know. I wonder why you're thinking that. Oh, wait, I know why you're thinking that. And folks, you'll know why she's uh, thinking that too here before we get done today. (laughs) Now, we're going to go back, Gina, to the time right after the Civil War. So we're going back in in time probably 150, 160 years. Mm. And those years were busy and prosperous ones for the Appalachian region. And you know why, don't you? Well, do tell me. Well, coal mines were being developed. Okay, okay. All these rich, prosperous folks from up north coming down to open up these uh, coal mines. Uh And they needed to have some way to get the coal out that they mined, so they had railroads built to come through there. Ah. One of the areas in Appalachia that supplied the coal to the rest of the industrialized world was named, ironically, Appalachia, uh-huh. the town uh-huh. in southwest Virginia. Now, you've been to Appalachia. Oh, oh, okay. I was raised near Appalachia. Right, right. Okay. To get that coal from the Appalachia area to market required transportation. And in this era of horses and wagons, the railroad was king. Mm -hmm. Now, two railroad companies ran lines into Appalachia, the town. One was the Southern Railroad, and the other, the more important one, was the L&N Railroad. Uh. Now, the L&N had a railroad at Cumberland Gap, Mm -hmm. running through a tunnel underneath the gap itself, which has some stories that we'll tell at some other point on that. And it would be no problem for them to extend that line from that tunnel up Powell Valley to Appalachia to haul out that southwest Virginia and eastern Kentucky coal to market. In the late 1880s and early 1890s, that's exactly what was done, with l ns line running up the valley and then through a narrow water gap called the Big Stone Gap, named for all the large rocks that lay in the North Fork of the Powell River that ran through it. Even so, Laying track wasn't that difficult of a job for the L&N workers had experience laying tracks in rugged terrain throughout the Appalachian region. They had one obstacle, though, and that was a large rock that projected out from the side of the mountain about a half mile from the town of Appalachia. This rock was very large, extending from high up on the ridge down to the Powell River waters below. Fortunately for the railroad, this rock, while large, was pretty narrow, So they decided to just cut through it with a tunnel for the trains to pass through. Hmm. Hmm. In 1892, work was started on this tunnel at the place known as the... (laughs) The Bee Rock, yes. (laughs) (laughs) Now, I'm guessing all y'all are wondering just how the Bee Rock got its name. Yeah. Well, stories tell of a man from Kentucky who liked to hunt in this area, a man by the name of David Collier who was in the Big Stone Gap, with some hunting companions. As they were tracking game through the woods, he happened to look up at that huge rock we just mentioned and noticed several very large bees' nests about halfway up. Apparently it was a good spot for bees to make their nests. Hmm. Well, he and his friends decided that with hives that large and that many of them, there had to be quite a bit of honey for the taking. So they set about trying to figure out how to get their hands on it. And they came up with a solution. Imagine this, if you will, Gina. Mm -hmm. They climbed up above the rock. Then using a strong rope, Collier was lowered down to the beehives. Mm -hmm. Where he managed to capture a swarm of bees. Okay. And also gather several hundred pounds of honey to take home to Kentucky. Oh. Some of the best honey they'd ever eaten and well worth the effort to uh, collect it. Hmm. Now, I don't know what kind of shape Mr. Collier was in by the time they got him back up on the rock with those bees, but 
Yeah. It must have been worth it, I suppose. Maybe he was a bee whisperer. <laughs> Well, anyway, the tunnel was dug through the Bee Rock, resulting in what many said was the shortest railroad tunnel in the world, which, as it turns out, wasn't quite correct. More like number three, after a tunnel near Nashville and another one in Johnson County, Tennessee. But it wasn't the shortness of the tunnel that those workers remembered. Mm -hmm. It was the beast they saw and heard. Oh. Yeah, you know we had to get to something like that, oh. right? Oh, each day after work was done, the men would set up camp near the tunnel for they to eat and get some rest and then sleep before the next day's work. It was at night that things got very odd near the Bee Rock. Several of the workers swore they were awakened at night by the sound of someone off in the distance calling out shrilly, Help me! Please, won't somebody come and help me? Hmm. Well, at first, some of the men went out into the dark woods to see if they could help whoever it was that was calling out. But they never, not once, ran into anyone out there. They did, though, hear rustling like someone was walking nearby through the leaves in the woods. But if they called out, that rustling turned into a full-out run toward the river. But it was too dark for anyone to see. Occasionally, one of the men would catch a glimpse of something in the moonlight as it scampered off. What they saw was not quite human, though. It was described as a part animal, part human something. Oh. And it was small, like one of those storybook trolls they'd heard tell about. Huh. And a name was born. Mm -hmm. They soon started calling the thing the Bee Rock Troll. Ugh. They also found a small cave on the side of the mountain that was obviously being used by someone. That was too small for a man to fit comfortably there, but a troll? Well, that was a different matter. <laughs> By now, these workers were finished with the tunnel, and the railroad had followed quickly with laying the new ties and rails that passed through it. That was fine for them, because what they'd heard and what they'd seen was enough to last them a lifetime. Pretty soon, the Bee Rock Troll was just another story. <laughs> Until the 1950s. Oh, at that time, there was a family living in Appalachia in a house up above where the Bee Rock Tunnel is located. Now, they'd heard about the old legend of the troll, but they didn't pay it no mind, not believing in trolls or goblins or ghosts or such. Then one evening, when the moon was full, the head of the household, who was out in his yard, heard a shrill voice coming up from below near the tunnel, just as plain as day. Help me! Please, won't somebody come and help me? Startled, the man listened closely, and up came that voice again. Help me, please! Won't anybody help me? He grabbed his shotgun, got a handful of shells, and headed down the hillside to where the voice had come from. Once there, he fired his gun, then fired again. And he saw in the moonlight the figure of a small, beastly-looking thing running away, darting from one tree to another as it headed toward the river. He fired again, and it disappeared. <laughs> that family had no further encounters with the troll after that. But, Gina, it's said that if you're at the Bee Rock Tunnel when the moon is full, you might just hear that troll walking up behind you. And you'll see him scamper past you like a bolt of lightning, hollering back at you, Help me! Please come and help me! Oh, my. <laughs> so... That tunnel still exists? Yes, I've been up there. Have you? Yeah, actually, you know, if you're watching us on the YouTube channel, you, you've been seeing pictures of it as we've been telling this mm -hmm. story. But yeah, it is now a walking trail uh -huh. uh, from Appalachia. You can go to Appalachian Park, walk across the railroad bridge, and about a half mile down there, short, easy walk, is the Bee Rock Tunnel. So you haven't gone when there's a full moon at night to see? That's your next I'm not trip. going to say, <laughs> although I guess the statute of limitations has passed, but I have been up there many a time back <clears> in the 1970s when it was a live railroad line, but uh, we're not going any farther than that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but it's, it's, a, it's so, a fascinating place. And I will tell you, there's another tunnel just down that trail called the Callahan Tunnel. Uh-huh. It's longer than this one. Not a whole lot longer, but it's longer. 
the wind will blow through it. And when I was up there, oh. hmm. when you walk through it, uh-huh. leaves will blow up behind you. And it sounds like there's somebody scampering behind you. And the wind will go at the speed that you're walking. So it's like it feels like there's something walking behind you uh. all the way through that tunnel. You think maybe that's one of those trolls, huh? You never know. Mm-hmm. Maybe the B-Rock troll has gone down to the Callahan yeah. tunnel. You never know. <laughs> another trip to be had, yeah. <laughs> and folks, that's our tale of the B-Rock Tunnel, another source of the folklore from this place we call home, Appalachia. Thanks for listening. You can subscribe to the Mountain Lore Podcast at Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Audible, Stitcher, or on your favorite podcast app. Till next we meet. Sweet dreams, podcast listeners. <laughs>